20,000 to fill the plane with to get to California to deliver this stone. This woman is planning to sell her house for her internet boyfriend. The only thing I can do is get a loan on my house, money that my husband had left me to live on, and my kids don't know I sent him that much money. They'll kill me when they find out. Paul needs $20,000 for gas to fill up his plane so he can get back to the United States. He said he was on a private jet, and that was taking him over to the mining area. Priscilla is willing to put everything on the line to meet this mysterious man face to face. When he come back to the States that he was going to come here and we was going to get married and uh, we'd be together forever. Let's see if we can crack this case and find out the truth behind Priscilla's internet love connection. And I told him, I said, you're the most expensive man I've ever had. <laughs> so. Real quick, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. Hello, my name's Priscilla Farmer. I'm 69 years old. I like to do sewing. I've been operating a shop with doing alterations for 25 years now. Other than that, my granddaughter is my greatest joy since I lost my husband in 2020. And I live all alone in a house that needs somebody else in it. He was in the service in Vietnam. He worked in mines, so we had coal dust and he smoked on top of that so he struggled a whole lot with breathing i know but we made it 36 years real rough sometimes with him being sick of course but we made it and now i do miss him very much you know but he's not suffering and that's how i look at it it's been struggles ever since trying to get all everything all together tried to get my life started again, which I was very depressed afterwards. I got, so I stay in my bedroom about all the time. I thought it would come out. And also, I've come a long way. Priscilla's husband passed away after 36 years of marriage. She lost her best friend and it put her into a depression. After a few years, she worked up the confidence to get back out there and try to meet someone new. I just finally got to the point, I thought, well, I'm going to just find somebody maybe I can get out with and hang out a little while with. And so I started going to these dating sites. Well, all I did was put my picture, what age I'd want to find somebody to be. The one I ran this guy with was a Christian dating site. And he lived closer than all the others, even though they was always supposed to be close to me. I started talking to him. I just sent him a message and he started talking to me. So we've just been doing it ever since. His name is Paul Allen Anderson and he's 64. I'd say he was about six foot tall. He had a little bit of gray in his hair. I thought he was nice looking as far as things went. That wasn't what actually caught me. It's just the way that he would talk to me and we'd talk about what was going on in our lives. He called me the first time we talked and we just was just expressing what our lives had been like. He was telling me that he didn't have any family left, they'd all passed away. And then uh, he just wanted somebody to talk with. I said, well, I'm kind of the same boat. I lost my husband and I just want somebody to talk with. So it started out just being friendly like said that when he was raised up that his dad made him work on the farm so you know that kind of linked us a little bit there he just kept expressing to me that he was rich well he was telling me he owned uh, two homes and then he was talking about a car he had was an suv he sent me a photo one time of him in his home everything was white and i said you like white? He said, yeah, it looks clean. I said, I don't like white, I like colors. <laughs> I told him that money was not my main thing. I wanted somebody I could be happy with for the rest of my life, however long that may be. I told him, I said, I'm a simple country girl and I don't need all that stuff. I dress simple. I'm not one of these that likes to put on these jewels and everything else and try to look like I'm something I'm not. I'm just me. And that's what I want to share it with. It's just somebody that will take that on and just make me happy. 
Paul was saying all of the right things, and the two had a lot in common. He was hardworking, handsome, and they both were widowed. Priscilla was excited every day he texted her. When we first talked, I had uh, a little bit of trouble with understanding, but I had no clue where he was from or what nationality he might have been. Did you get all your jobs done today? Yes, I did. I went to the airport. Uh, also, I went to the storage road. Uh, Usually when we are on the phone together, we'd be on the phone like two hours or something. Yeah, we just seemed to, to click. Everything just started falling in place. And then he said, I'm going to get you on an airplane. I said, no, you're not either. I said, I don't fly. <laughs> I do not fly. He said, oh, you'll love it, especially on a private jet. He said, you really love it. And I said, you'll probably have to knock me out to get me on it, but if that's what you want to do, that'll be fine. We talked about him make, working that out with, their, with his pilot. When he come back to the States, that he was going to come here and we was going to get married. And uh, we'd be together forever. Because that's all I wanted. Where my husband was sick and everything, we didn't get to do anything, go anywhere. So, you know, that was partly what I was wanting. And somebody just to go places with me. And, and then after a while, he got to talk, calling me his queen and uh, his wife. I got to talking about all of my family. He said, well, you got a big family. I said, Jim. I said, they come here every Thanksgiving. So he said, well, I'll get there on Thanksgiving. Just before Paul was going to send his private jet to pick up Priscilla, he had a small mining contract he needed to take care of. I think as far as that goes, even if we had the funds to start up the process, I could do something about it, at least. It's another than that, I don't really know. Okay. Pat, you let me know what to tell you. Okay, I'll do that. So I'm trying to do all I can do. And there you are, and thank you so much. I'm trying to do something. Get you back around this way. Well, what he had told me was that he uh, goes overseas and then he pays these people to go in and mine. He's got the mines for him. And he asked me if I cared if he went on his trip. He said he was on a private jet and that was taking him over to the mining area. He'd be back within a few days. After a few days, Paul made it back safely. He was so happy that he was able to finish his contract and the trip was successful. Priscilla was glad to hear that he got home and they would finally be able to meet face to face. First thing that I know he did, he got in touch with me. He just told me that he was back and then he was started making plans for to come and see me. And he said, well, said, I'm gonna fix and retire. Do you think I ought to do this second job? And I said, well, if it's up to you. If you're wanting to retire, retire. If you wanna do this last job, then do it. And he was talking about doing this as a favor to this guy. And he said, well, he said, well, I'm gonna do this one last job and then I'm gonna retire and I'm gonna come where you're at. Paul had to complete one more contract to deliver a stone he found mining on his last job. He told Priscilla that he was taking his private jet to Hong Kong. While traveling there was when things went wrong. I'll be dead before another Christmas here. If I stay here for a little bit longer, I'm afraid I'll, I'll just die here. So I don't think being here for longer is a good thing unless I just want to kill myself. Well, you don't want to do that. He didn't have enough money to get everything with that he needed to get. He needed money there so he could get the plane out of the airport and uh, to pay for his room that he had. That's when it started. He started asking me for money. And he said, now, you know, I wouldn't ask you for this if I didn't really need it. You know, I never asked a thing from you on the first trip. Every time I asked him a question, he was answering it without any problems, it seemed. Is that legal? Um, that is legal because we have all the proper documentations. But that is if he decides not to buy it anymore, we'll put it out there. We'll have people bid on it. Oh. And we could make it worth it at least $50 million of profit. Just like people bid for art. 
Uh, he uh, stayed there till he got the stone, supposedly, and he took a picture of it and sent it to me. And he told me to delete it because he didn't want nobody seeing it because it could put him in harm's way if anybody knew he had that stone. And he said he needed some to pay the uh, storage place and then the storage at the airplane. So I provided him with 2000 to get that done. I just couldn't understand why a man had all this money, didn't have taxes money, but he said where he's overseas, he couldn't get a hold of it. So he needed help. So I helped. I went to the bank and wired the money to him. I wired it to uh, somebody in Florida. I mailed it to them and then they got it to him. Paul claims that him and his team had to make an emergency landing and they were stuck on an island. He sent me a message and he said, well, honey, I'm in, I'm in a mess again. I said, I, I don't have enough fuel to get over this ocean and the pilot will not take me because he's afraid that we'll run out of fuel while we're going over. I need 20,000 to fill the plane with and to get to California to deliver this stone. He just kept saying, well, I need money to pay for the room I'm in. I need money to pay the security guard. And I asked him the other day, I said, well, how much longer are you going to get to stay here? To stay there. And he said, well, not much longer. So I'm going to have to hurry up and get out of here. So he's wanting me out for the last month. And you're going to be making diamond rings, diamond necklaces, earrings, bracelets, and watches. They're going to beautify or adorn these things with these diamonds. You have to know that you're going to need to be certified by the government. And you're going to have to prove origin, originality, authenticity for these stones they have. And these stones have to be certified by the government that they're real, they're genuine. And they're not selling fakes to people. I guess it just wasn't time for you to retire, was it? Yes, I told you. I'm retiring right after this. There's no more work for me. I've already discussed all this with you, but I know. But I think you've forgotten some part of them, too. You know, this has been the last deal for me, the last job for me. I plan to have fun and enjoy my life with my wife. I've been working for so long and for too long, and I'm tired. I want to travel. I want to spend time just sitting beside you at the store. You're watching you work or watching you do something you love. I also want to spend time with you all weekend at home, go to church, in the morning, in the evening. I'd like to take a trip with you. Just go anywhere for a day, anywhere where no one knows us. He never did make it. As far as I know, he's still not made it. Is that guy still waiting for it? And he said, yeah. I said, that guy's waiting for it. I said, I keep, keep it in touch with him, too. And he's waiting for me to bring the stone. And now he's telling me he needs 20000 or 25000 more to still buy gas for that plane and get to California to deliver the stone and then to get back home. And I told him, I said, you're the most expensive man I've ever had. <laughs> Priscilla was paying to keep this man alive. He needed money for food, water, Wi-Fi, hotels, you name it. She ended up sending every dollar her husband left for her. The funds I gave him the first time was money that my husband had left me to live on. And my kids don't know I sent him that much money. They'll kill me when they find out. You know, I know it hit my daughter real hard that she said, I know where you got the money from. In my heart, I don't want to lose him, but I don't want to lose my daughter more. It made me feel real good to think he wasn't playing me. If my daughter knew that he was real, she wouldn't be as upset with me. It is tempting for me to send him the rest of the money so he can get home to me. The only thing I can do is get along on my house and get it to him that way. And I really don't want to do that because I know that this house will go on to be my daughter's house. And actually, they're supposed to send a guy around Tuesday to look at the house to see if it's worth what I want, which she said it according to everything she had seen on it, that it was well worth. 
try to make it right with my family. That's what I need. After we heard that Priscilla was thinking about taking a loan out on her house, we called her right away to stop her. Our team got together to pull everything that we could from Priscilla. We needed to come with some concrete facts to back why this man was lying about being on an island with a private jet. With just a few searches on socialcatfish.com, we were able to find out who exactly this man was in these images. Are you wanting to know the truth about your online friend or lover? Reach out to us, we can help you find the truth. Email us, share my story at socialcatfish.com. Priscilla had been hiding this from her family for years. Her daughter was disgusted when she heard about her sending all of her money to Paul. We needed to get through to her and get her to understand that this guy was never going to meet her face to face. Our team felt we had enough information to debunk everything this man was telling her. So we set up a call with Priscilla to go over what we found. Hey Priscilla, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. I've just been waiting around to uh, see what I am really getting into and figure out how to get out of it. What's been going on lately with Paul? Uh, nothing really. We haven't talked as much as we generally talk. And sometimes I haven't answered the phone when he calls. I was just lonely. Just want somebody to be with, talk to. Mostly it's been about helping him get out of where he's at. Uh, he needs the money to get out and how miserable he is where he's at. And the fact that he's been sick most of the time the last couple of months and he needs to get out of there so he can get some help. And he's told me that the guy that was over the security guards that they had took him to the hospital a couple of times because they found him passed out on the floor and all just anything that he knew would touch to make me want to help him. And what are you wanting out of doing this interview? To set myself free from all of it and just let nature take its course. If I meet somebody, I meet somebody. If I don't, I won't. Today, we're going to go through and debunk and also give you answers on where a lot of these images are coming from and try to uh, show you the truth about everything. Okay. Okay, let's hop into the searches, Bree. So the first thing we looked into was the image that he sent you earlier today, saying that's where he's currently living. We ran a reverse image search on it, and we found that it's actually a resort that's located in Uganda. Maybe it wasn't as bad as he was telling me, huh? What we're getting at is, is that photo is not an original photo. It was taken off the internet. That wasn't a photo that he took for you to see. That photo was meant to showcase this resort. Because he was talking about how they all having to share rooms together because it was supposed to be the people that worked for the security guards. How there was several people in a room and he had no privacy and he had nothing really to eat and he was just in pitiful shape. Well, I know he uh, told me that I couldn't show it to anybody because of the fact that the guy with security didn't want anybody to see the picture and months ago I probably would have went with it but it was getting to be too much. That's good. I mean you're starting to open up and see some of these red flags so that's a great start for you. We took his email and ran it through our email verification tools. We couldn't find any digital footprint on the internet with a man using the name Paul Allen. If I run an email search on your email, I'd find a phone numbers, address, your social media. He didn't have that. So it's almost as if he set this email to just correspond with you. Now, I guess that was what he was trying to tell me that no matter what I done, I wouldn't find him. Well, that takes us to this photo that you received of him holding his passport. He was trying to show me that uh, he was real and that the people that he was staying with, the places and all that, they had got a copy of that. And so they were letting him stay there because they knew that they could get up with him if they needed to. And did the photo make you believe that he was real? I mean, I, I don't know nothing about passports or nothing. So I didn't know what I was looking at anything anyway, really. He kept telling me, he said, well, I, I sent that to you. 
you know who I am. That's really me. That was supposed to be the whole point of it. And we found that it had clearly been photoshopped. It was layered with different types of Photoshop from his hands to the actual image of the passport. We zoomed in on the passport and we found that it was the wrong format. And we found that he took another photo and layered it on top of that one. And we compared it to a sample template of a passport and it's completely fraudulent. I'm not surprised. And I told him, I said, I better not find out you're lying to me. It bothers me, but I'm trying to hold my grip. This last bit of information is going to put the nail in the coffin. Our goal with all of these cases is to give you a overwhelming amount of information. We tried to run his IP address. He did click on our FU gift cards link a few times, but every time he clicked it, he was running a VPN. We're running into that more and more. What I can tell you is this man in these images, his name's not Paul. I want to know who I've been dealing with. His name is Giovanni Leo. He's not trapped on some island. He's not waiting for gas to put into his private jet. He's an Italian chef. And we found all of his verified accounts. So starting with his YouTube channel, he uploads cooking tutorials. We were also able to locate his official Facebook, Instagram, and his website. All of these profiles are public. This person that you're speaking to stole all of his photos and created this crazy story about him traveling the world. And this story was gonna continue to go and go and go. Giovanni Leo is not a part of this scam in any capacity. He's just an innocent person that was used to dupe you out of money. I'm holding it together. This is Giovanni Leo's Instagram profile. Yeah, I see a couple of pictures there. Just like what I got. Maybe more if you keep going. Yeah. That one right there, just him looking with the glasses on. I've seen that one before. You've heard Paul's voice. Yeah. This is Giovanni's voice here. Ho queste due bellissime code di polpo fresco e voglio fare un bel antipasto. Yeah. I understand that. Well, when he first started asking for money, I should have known that uh, most men depend on themselves. They don't depend on women to keep them up. Well, Priscilla, we're sorry to say, but none of this relationship was true, and you're definitely involved in a romance scam. I'm shaken, and I've tore, I'm tore up inside. But I just try to keep that in, because I'm supposed to be stronger than that. I just don't understand why people do stuff like him. Why do they want to hurt women or men? I know of some men that's had the same situation. And I don't understand why, other than the money. And I mean, like I kept telling him, money means, means nothing really to me, as long as I've got enough to pay my bills. One thing that I'll add is you stepping into dating, the dating scene at your age is probably the one of the toughest things that a person has to overcome. You've had this great marriage with this guy and you described him to us. He sounded like a great man. And then you get online and you're expecting the same thing out of the next person you meet. You know, it's so hard to find somebody real on the dating sites. It's literally flooded with fake profiles and, and people that are trying to dupe you out of money because you are a good person and you're trusting and they're looking for someone like you so they can take advantage of that. I'll be more careful next time I try to do anything if I decide to online. I'm glad that I know for a fact now. Just sometimes you don't want to realize what things are, so you just put a wild up to what it is. You know, so, I mean, I've done things that I never would have dreamed I'd done with him to get him what he wanted, you know. But uh, now I know the next one will be begging me instead of me begging them. There's <laughs> nothing to do with me. The next step for you is filing a police report. We urge you to go down to your local police station and file that report. The more we can report, the more people can understand how common this is 
and more people can understand how much money is lost to this type of scam. Well, uh, he's waiting on me to call him when I come in from work this evening. So I'm going to call him and I'm going to tell him what all I know and then tell him I don't want to talk to him anymore. I don't need nothing like that. Come between me and my family and stuff. I don't need that. I liked him a lot, but I, I don't like him enough to lose family and everything I've got for. Priscilla had been through a lot trying to get Paul back to the United States. So many built up emotions after hearing everything he told her was a lie. The next day, she decided to confront Paul by phone with her daughter. I'm more upset because you've been lying to me. How do you mean I've been lying to you? Where are you at? How do you mean about that? Where are you at? I told you where I'm at. I had some people track you down. It's impossible to track you down. I'm glad I make you say, but because my phone is blocked and you know I have security up on my phone, what's up there to say to my phone? I think you're in Ghana. I don't think you've uh, come to this way yet. What? What? Yeah. That's where you're at. I don't get you. That's where you're at. It's not possible. I told you. Why is it not possible? I am here in Brussels, Bojo. We've been talking. I've done everything I can to prove myself to you. I don't know why we're going back and forth on this again. I got the, I got the thinking. I've got the gravity file link you said. It doesn't work on my phone. Your picture is not you either. How do you mean? The pictures you have been sending me, they are not you. I found a whole list of uh, pictures that this man has had taken. And he's a chef. He's a chef. And you're not who you say you are. Queen. Yeah, I'm the king. Wait, 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 wait. Why don't you just be honest Please. with me? Please. Please, time. please, just be honest please, with me. Please, please, please try to listen to me. I'm being very honest with you. I don't know what is happening with you or on your end. I know this has been happening for some time now. I'm just here to tell you that I had you checked out. You're not who you're showing me that you are. You're not where you're telling me you're at. So they won't be no more money coming that way. I heard you. Thank you so much. I'm trying to be good Thank about you this. And listen to me, please. Thank you for everything you have done for me. And I will still keep your number so that I can return whatever money I took from you, as promised. Oh, yeah. Uh, I guess I'll live a few more years, so you may have a little time to get it to me. Mm, I don't think it'll be a few more years. Regardless of how I do it, I'll still get all your money back to you, as promised. Well, why don't you really show me who you are and tell me where you're at? I am. No, you're not. You believe who? I had professionals to find you and check you out. I have told you a number of times. I don't know what more to say. Telling me doesn't prove a thing. I want to see you. And I've tried to be good to you. And I was hoping you was doing the same to me, but that's not the case. If you believe what the saying of what we shared and everything I've said or everything we've discussed, I I can't have this battle with you. Well, I'm not battling with you. I do promise you 
I do promise you, I will give you money back to you when I'm at home. And I'll come over and give you a message. At least, I don't do that much. You need to see me in person. At least so that. Why can't you? I said I'm who I am. Why can't you show me over the phone? Say. So that's yeah. the end.